What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Slackers. Just getting to this video right this second because I sat down I didn't stage nothing. What is going on though? We are back with the Smash Bros. Upgraded Tournament. Uh, in case anybody's wondering, the next matchup for the Everyone Is Here Tournament, that is on Saturday. Just to clarify that, just to clear things up, that, it, that will be Saturday. We'll get to that then. But uh, today, new matchup, new results. Good matchup as well, so um, this should be fun. If you haven't seen it before, it's a very simple concept. 100 characters put into a tournament each day on the channel. I upload one of the matches from the tournament, except for Sundays. And then we, uh, how the matches work, I'll talk about both characters, uh, maybe go over mini moveset pool, maybe a story, maybe some facts, whatever it might be, and then uh, we'll talk about one of the, we'll vote between one of the two characters down in the comment section. Simple enough. Um, yeah, so I uh, got some rules. Let's uh, run through the rules very quickly. All right, rule number one, you got to be open-minded for this tournament because it deals with characters that can be upgraded into playable characters, such as assist trophies, spirits, me costumes, things like that. Makes sense? All right, that's why you got to be a little open-minded. Next rule, uh, please keep in mind that you only get one vote per person. We keep it fair that way. If I see anything suspicious, I will throw the vote away. I have done it before. I will do it again if I have to. I hope I don't have to, but... It might come to it, but um, next rule, how do you vote? Simple, down in the comments, type the name of the character you are voting for. Uh, but you can vote for both characters, that is completely fine. Yes, you can vote for both characters by simply typing the word both. Uh, rest of the rules though, double elimination tournament, meaning the character has to lose twice before being officially eliminated. Then once we get to the results to determine the winner and loser of each individual match, if there happens to be a tie in the votes, we flip a coin on camera, fairest way to break a tie. And then uh, each matchup voting wise only lasts for just one week. So when an episode gets uploaded, you have seven days to get your vote in. Otherwise, it won't count. So that's the end of the rules. All right, so let's quickly go over the results from last week. Pretty good match, but really was not close in the slightest. And the matchup happened to be Kamek from the, uh, we'll say the Yoshi series. Um, but his opponent was Dr. Eggman, the battle of villainous proportions. And who could out-villain the other one? Well, I think most of us know where this one headed. Dr. Eggman picks up the win here. 37 votes for him. Only 11 votes for Kamek. So, uh, yeah, Kamek drops to loser bracket. Eggman, of course, advances one step further in the winner's bracket. So, uh, there's your results. That means we go straight to the matchup today. And I like I liked the matchup only because of, I guess, timing in, uh, in, the, in, in the world of Nintendo news and stuff. The matchup today, though... Uh, we do have Gardevoir from the Pokemon series. Gardevoir, kind of a sleeper. Uh, I, I, I want to talk about something that had to do with a leak, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, Gardevoir's opponent, Paper Mario from the Origami King. That Paper Mario. Uh, okay, any of the... It's the same Paper Mario, whatever. It's uh, So, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Gardevoir versus uh, Paper Mario. So, Gardevoir. Very interesting Pokemon, right? One of the more popular Pokemon might have gotten popular for a specific reason, we'll say, but I won't. I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But Gardevoir is still immensely popular, nonetheless. Great typing, great potential for a move set stuff that we haven't seen with any of the Pokemon on the roster yet. And I think let's focus on that for a second, right? Move set from a series that has a lot of reps already. Now, uh, we, we take the uh, the Fire Emblem into, you know, it, it's under fire a lot, right? Too many Fire Emblem characters, right? Well, I'm in the boat of, yes, they might have a lot of reps already. Do we necessarily need another one? Maybe not, but I'm always open to the idea of another one. I'm always open to the idea of another Mario character, Pokemon, Fire Emblem. As long as they do something completely different, that's very unique to just their character that the rest of the series doesn't do. And in this case, Gardevoir does that. Fairy typing, Moon Blast. Oh, come on. I don't know if you could make... I guess Moon Blast. Would that have to be... No, I guess... Like, make a Gardevoir, right? That would have to be the Final Smash? I'd have to assume. Um, or, like, Moon Blast has it. Fairy moves, Psychic. Like, there's a lot of tremendous potential. And so much so that, uh, what was it, August, right around August 2018, so almost coming up on two years ago, 
Gardevoir was actually in a leak. I wish I would have found the... I tried to click on the link to the, the actual thing, but it was like, no, nope, it doesn't exist anymore. But if anybody knows the leak that I'm referring to, the Gardevoir slash Gothitel leak. Anybody remember this one? Like, Gardevoir got to the point where this was shortly after Echo Fighters became a coined term. So people are like, all right, Gardevoir's popular. Let's throw on some random Pokemon with her. That would be an Echo Fighter. And then Gothitelle came, came in, and people were talking about that for, like, weeks. There was people that were believing it. I never believed it for one second because, one, I can't see Gothitelle being an Echo Fighter of Gardevoir. I just, I, I don't see that as possible. And then the same leak, I don't know, I'm focusing too much on the leak. We already know it was fake, but the leak said something like, uh, Simon wasn't in the game, but Richter was, and it was kind of like, all right, that's kind of already, that's a dead giveaway, right? But back to the point, Gardevoir being a part of a leak, being one of the more popular Pokemon, it was kind of like, all right, is it a little eyebrow raising that, okay, maybe there's, there could be something to it. It's not a Pokemon that really pops up in terms of, um, fake leaks and, you know, rumors and stuff like that. So it was kind of cool. It caught a lot, a lot of people off guard at first. It's like, Wait a minute, Gardevoir and Gothitelle? That seems very random, but at the same time, it's like, okay, Nintendo and Smash Bros, they d will do some random and really strange inclusions in the roster, and it's like, all right, it could be wacky enough to where it makes sense, all right? Again, Gardevoir from po any Pokemon, you already got your moveset, easy. Comes from a Nintendo game, first party, simple. Like I just said, the moveset is easy, immensely popular amongst the Pokemon community, and even, not necessarily the Pokemon community, but uh, definitely has a lot going on. Is, I have not played... Isn't Gardevoir in Pokemon? Pokemon Fighters? Pokemon Tournament? Isn't Gardevoir one of the playable characters in that? I have not played that game in so long, but I'm pretty sure Gardevoir was in that game as a playable fighter, right? Or do I look stupid right now? I probably look stupid nonetheless. But Gardevoir, I, I really... If it wasn't for the matchup today, I might actually vote Gardevoir, but I don't think I'm going to. But I still got to say Gardevoir has tremendous potential if they ever get considered to be playable in the future. Plus, there's always the, hey, Gen 3 does not have any reps, right? So maybe that could be something they could, uh, if they really wanted to focus on that, like, all right, which uh, generations do not have playable reps yet? Gen 3, definitely one of them that doesn't, so... Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. She's a Pokeball Pokemon, after all. Maybe she gets upgraded. Maybe Gardevoir does. I don't know. Could be interesting. Could be strange, but it could be fun. But uh, how about another fun character? The character that is getting my vote in this one. Paper Mario. So, what was it? Uh, last week? Or is it earlier this week? Wow, uh, I lose track of days. Within the last week, we'll say that, alright? Within the last week, a Paper Mario game gets a brand new... Paper Mario game gets announced. Paper Mario and the Origami King. I'm going to pick it up because video games are fun to play. I, right? Been waiting for a new Paper Mario game for a while. So, awesome. I uh, got something new in the summer to look forward to. It's going to be great. Comes out, what, July 17th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, still curious to see how the, the battling system is going to play out. But, nonetheless, I'm still willing to give it a chance. So, here's the thing about Paper Mario, right? Isn't this year the Mario franchise's 30th anniversary? Now, I will never put any emphasis on a series anniversary date or a specific character's anniversary. I will never put any emphasis on that. I don't think there's really anything ever to it, even though it comes up a lot. But I still can't name one instance where that's actually mattered for a new character reveal or a DLC character. It's like, I can't think of nothing. So, just because it might be the Mario franchise's 30th anniversary... Doesn't necessarily mean, alright, yep, new Mario characters getting announced this year, right? Nah, hold on, hold on, okay? But Paper Mario is kind of interesting, though, right? So, Paper Mario, the fans have been wanting a new game for a while. We got one. Thank you, Nintendo, for listening. We gotta see how it plays out first before we can, I think, give a proper opinion about the game, right? What's the point of complaining about something you've never played? You can look at something through online, but it's, it's not actually... You're not actually experiencing the game, and that's what the games are all about. Your experience, well, playing them. I'm getting too far off track. 
Let's focus back to Paper Mario. So, again, another Mario character. But that's the thing. He's nothing like the Mario we have on the roster. He's nothing like the Dr. Mario we have on the roster. He's flat. He's smaller. He could be a little bit faster, potentially. He's an entirely different character. If he didn't have the name Mario in there, maybe more people would be open to the idea. Because I do see a lot of people in comments when Paper Mario has a matchup where they're like, yeah, we don't really need three Marios, you know. The Mario we have is enough. I, okay, I can understand that, but you gotta keep in mind, Paper Mario plays literally nothing like Mario. Literally nothing like the two that we have on the roster. He's his own identity, he's his own character. Hammers, uh, oh, oh boy, I had I have like a whole idea. But the, the buddy system in, in the Paper Mario games where he teams up with, you know, Paracoopas, uh, he's got the actual Koopa shells. It could be like a shell kick or a shell toss. He's got little friends that come out and could zap you. It would be a fun little down special. You throw something on the ground, the opponent runs over it, gets a little a stun effect for a couple seconds, boom, followed up with a big forward smash with that hammer coming in. Uh, he could turn himself, use the paper mechanic of his character, fold him in half, I don't know, turn him into a paper airplane, turn him into other paper swans, I, I don't know. There's just a lot you can really do if you really want to dig deep into the Paper Mario character. It, take away the name Mario. If you combine, or not combine, but if you co compared Mario's moveset with Paper Mario's potential moveset, they're nothing alike, which makes them very different, which is perfect. That's what I was saying with Gardevoir as well. As long as I'm always open to a new character from a franchise that does have a lot of representation, not saying they deserve another one, but if you're doing something different that nobody else from your franchise is doing, I can welcome it. That is completely fine with me. I love it. So, Paper Mario has always been on my, you know, towards the somewhat top of my list of wanted characters. He's easily getting my vote in this one. Very excited for the new Paper Mario game. I want to play it, and then I can give my opinion about it, you know? So, I'm not going to go on Twitter and be like, Oh, Paper Mario game looks like crap. How would I know? I haven't played it, but... Uh, Different topic, different topic. Anyway, let me know who you guys got down in the comments. Gardevoir, Paper Mario, or both. All are good options. So, um, sneak peek for tomorrow. What do we got for tomorrow? Ooh, tomorrow's results. I think this is going to be really one-sided, but we'll find out. Tomorrow's matchup results are going to be from Goemon, from the Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. Yeah. Uh, and his opponent was Gino. We'll see how that one plays out. And then the, the matchup for tomorrow... There we go. The matchup for tomorrow is going to be another <laughs> Mario character. Pauline from the Mario universe is taking on maybe one of the front runners for this tournament, we'll say. Bomberman. We'll see how that one plays out tomorrow. That should be a good matchup, actually. Pauline usually brings it. Bomberman fans usually bring it. That should be... I'm expecting that one to be close, but that's tomorrow. Today's today. Today's wrapping up. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.